time is to you. you know, one time I had this great sandwich. They put it at the bottom of the bread, but not the top. I love you too, my little raisin. Sorry about the long call. It's just that one 800 collects got a really low rate. Ten cents a minute every evening. Ten cents a minute? Amazingly cheap for a collect call, isn't it? Hmm. Ten cents a minute is incredibly low. Now, I too have a little raisin, and I'd like to call it using one 800 collect of course. No. I'm free to go on with you. 1-800-COLLECT. Ten cents a minute every evening. There's an island where the waters are still. Where the only thing you have to do is lie on your back. Watching the waves rush in and out all day long. And where you'll need to go to recover. After you return from our trip, enter the Heineken Ski and True Adventure sweepstakes. And you can win a trip to Costa Rica, Thailand, Mexico, or South Africa. And while you're at it, you might want to book your recovery vacation. Sensei, we need new uniforms. Sorry, our server's down. Do you have a catalog number? Yes. DB-15. 3D-50, sure. No, DB-15. Got it. No, 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 no. Sensei, we need new uniforms. When HP Net Servers with Intel Pentium 2 processors power your e-business, we're always in business. You know why the 99 cent super value menu has lasted nine years? Because the food is so good. And because day in and day out, you can't get a better value. Nine years. Look at that. I still have the same time. Wendy Super Value Menu, 99 cents every day. 1-1 one, one after two periods of play, headed to the third period. John Saunders and Barry Melrose, we're going to shift gears now, move from the east to the west. And we apologize, or I apologize in front to Geek Carbonyl. Yeah, you should, you should. When he was on the ice during this final minute last night, I said, hmm, they're not going to get a goal here. The defensive player's out there, but Ski throws wide and do it. Oh, you're a big man, I'll tell you. <laughs> we talked about that goal last night. There was a good shift, but that does not do that uh, shift justice. This might be the best shift Geek Carbonyl ever had right there. He gets the center ice. He's fighting off three Detroit Red Wings. He still managed to dump the puck in deep. But what he does after that is even more important. Puck goes in deep. Murphy's got it. No problem. Everything's good for the Detroit Red Wings. Out of nowhere comes Guy Carbonell. He throws <laughs> himself at the puck. Now he wins a physical battle for the puck on his knees with Murphy. And he knocks it back to the point on his stomach. So he's been down on the ice twice already. Detroit gets running around here. They got three guys out near the point. Eiserman should be down low playing three-on-three -three defense with his two defensemen. Now Carbonell gets it. He gets a break off Lipson's stick. Yes, but he deserved that break because of the work ethic he gets. Unbelievable shift. And that shows what Ken Hitchcock thinks of Guy Carbonell. Has a defensive player on the ice when his team needs a goal. And, and Hitch was right putting this guy nice. It's fantastic, fantastic shift. All joking aside, though, we really shouldn't be that surprised. He won two Stanley Cups with the Montreal Canadiens. And in Montreal, winning is not only expected, it's tradition. In the National Hockey League, one organization is perched high above the rest. Ladies, Gabby Tom. They were the team that won every Stanley Cup, and uh, they were the team to beat. So there were, right away, there was a big... Uh, big influence in, 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 in the way I was playing and, and why I wanted to play hockey. 24 Stanley Cup banners cascade down from Montreal's rafters, nearly twice that of any other franchise. Throughout the years, you have a standard that, that you try and keep, and, and playing in, in Montreal was the best thing about it is that you had a chance to win every year. Bob Ganey is a major part of the Montreal mystique. He captained the Canadiens for half of his 16 playing seasons, winning five Stanley Cups. Now the Stars' vice president and general manager has six other former Canadians on the ice and his coaching staff. I don't know if we know everything about what it takes to win the Stanley Cup, but we've been there, and I think that's one of the reasons why Bob and, uh, went to get Craig Ludwig and myself and, and especially at the university and uh, Mike Keene and Brian Scrooge. This Canadian connection is a lethal combination. Ludwig and Keene provide the muscle, with Carboneau and Scrooge providing the intangible. When you have players who have been there and experienced that, that, that uh, you, you want that talk to, uh, and that kind of influence to permeate through your group. Especially when your organization is seeking its first Stanley Cup. You can feel the attitude in here. You, you can feel that atmosphere that, that, that is the bottom line. Now. And I know there were, you know, there were years with this team that it didn't seem like it was the main goal was to win. And, and uh, now it is. That desire to win is just one similarity between the two organizations. There's a lot of similarities in the fact that uh, we are just a, a group that gets along, a group that goes out night after night and works really hard. 
and uh, I think a, a group that is very committed to this system. A system that earned Dallas this year's President's Trophy. But to capture Lord Stanley's Cup, the Stars will have to take it away from another former Montreal great, Scotty Bowman. One of the great places in sport to ever go is the locker room of the Montreal Canadiens, and I'm paraphrasing, but they talk about passing the torch, and they have the pictures of all the great players. You think Richard and Beliveau and Lafleur. This is tradition. This is tradition, and, and I give you my old corny saying, if winning was easy, more teams would do it. And that's what you do when you go out and get guys that have won the Stanley Cup before. There's no surprises. Everybody wants to win the Stanley Cup, but very few people will do the dirty, nasty, ugly, rotten things night after night after night to win the Stanley Cup. That's why guys have done it before. You know they will do it again. Washington Capitals, who do they go out and get the last couple of years? Billy Ranford's won a Stanley Cup. Simon's won a Stanley Cup. Tikkanen's won a Stanley Cup six or eight Stanley Cups, and Bellows has won a Stanley Cup. So this is just not the Dallas Stars doing this. Every team that wants to win the Stanley Cup, everybody that's got any brains at all goes out at the deadline and gets people that are winners. And Dallas has done that better than anybody else. Detroit does that, and now you see the Washington Capitals doing that as well. And Bellows from the Montreal yep. Canadiens, another one of those Habs that got it done. All right, don't forget, Dallas will hope to have a chance to win the Stanley Cup. To do that, they must win the next two against Detroit. They're on the road to face the Red Wings, 7.30 Eastern time. We'll have a see you tomorrow night. Michael Pekka, who's got a long time without a goal. This is his first point of the series. It put Buffalo up 1-0, but we're tied right now. The name Stein. Emergent Stein. This summer, if you're looking for action, Blast off! X marks the spot. ESPN Snickers production. Hi, I'm George Morrison, reminding you to eat all you can. And for one for the kids. And for one for the kids. For the kids. And for one for the kids. Not going anywhere for a while. Not in the line. And for one for the kids. I'm... Uh, Grab a Snickers. Because nothing handles your hunger better. Oh! As long as me. Hungry? Why wait? I have a lot of friends and characters that are impulsive mm. and dramatic. Because the real me is pretty basic. I'm even a little practical. Like a while back, I noticed I had some flakes. So naturally, I started using heavy shoulders. Of course, it helps keep the flakes away. But if it needs my hair looking like this, why mess with a good thing? Head and shoulders. Changes dandruff problems. Into beautiful hair. According to the FBI, 54% of all computer network espionage is done by disgruntled employees. Tim gets a half million dollar bonus. I get a 3% raise. has changed to 10, 10, 3, 2, 1, but nothing's really changed. You still save over AT&T on every call in the U.S. and still save 50% on every call over 20 minutes. There's no need to sign up. Just dial 10, 10, 3, 2, 1, then 1, then the number as usual. For me, it's the 50%, isn't it? Now it's time for you to folks for the MasterCard Cutting Edge Play of the Year. Play number one, Sean Podine of the Flyers defies gravity and scores. Play number two, the Sabres Hatchick dominates Philadelphia. An impossible play! And number three, Vancouver's Todd Bertuzzi stuns the Senators. The highlight reel goal! Call now and vote. The win will be announced during Game 2 of the Stanley Cup Finals on ESPN. Don't forget, at 10.30 or following the hockey game, baseball tonight will get you up to speed with everything that happened in the major leagues tonight. And then that'll be followed by SportsCenter at 11 o'clock Eastern time. Stick around. When we come back, we'll look ahead to the third period. The Capitals, the Sabres, nodded at one apiece. And a snake is dry. Australian for beer. When 
one is competing for the eye of the judges. One must keep a firm leash on odor and perspiration. Thus, right guard, clear stick or clear gel. Powerful protection that glides on clear to make sure odor and wetness obey. Okay, boys, we're on. Blue, 22, 64, 38, hut, hut, shield. Right guard, clear stick or clear gel. Anything left will be uncivilized. The world thinks American soccer is second rate. The world thinks we don't belong here. The world thinks our team is weak. The world thinks it can intimidate me. We'll see about that. Coffee, 9 p.m., $12. Thai food, 11 p.m., $65. Color copy, 2 a.m., $320. Eye drops, mouthwash, 5 a.m., $10. Creating the perfect presentation overnight. Priceless. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard Business Card. Accept it for everything you need to get the job done. Red Dog Rules for Living, number 27. Welcome back. Tied at one apiece. The Washington Capitals perhaps 20 minutes away from marching on. We talked about Buffalo's power play and then wanted to look at the Caps. Total different velocity on the Washington Capitals power play. Much more skilled power play than Buffalo. And this is a team that does not look to shoot. They look to make a pretty play every time they get the puck. And why not? You got guys like Oates, you got Juno, you got Phil Housley on the power play. Good hunting the puck here. Right here, Goncha, who's playing good hockey again, wins a battle down low. Juno gets it. Bellows, one of those guys that won the Stanley Cup that I talked about goes out to the point. Now you're going to see the different philosophies. How's he get that he's not looking to shoot? It goes into Oates. You know Oates isn't going to shoot. He's looking to make a pretty play into Juno. Juno gets it. I ain't going to shoot it either. It's going across the Gonchar. I ain't going to shoot it. No matter even if there's a man in front, they're still looking to make a pretty play. Like right there. How's he trying to make a backdoor play to Oates for a tip-in goal? Let's do it again. Goes out to Juno. Back here. Now here you're going to see a chance. But they only look to shoot once, and what happens? Great block. Buffalo would have had three, four shots by now. Washington still looking for that perfect play. Juno gets it. It's got to fire it there. Uh, Bellows in front of the net for the rebound. Still not throwing at the net. So the Buffalo power play looking for shots. Creativity. Washington's looking for passes. Great skill doesn't count if you don't get a shot out of it. Don't forget, game two of the Stanley Cup Finals, Thursday, June 11th. That would be one week from tonight. At 7.30 Eastern time, we begin things with the cut for the cut. We've got a third period of ahead. Buffalo may be golfing. He's just keeping it, trying to make sure they get to the course on time. Quality, dependability, satisfaction. That's what you get from Brown Darlington Honda. The same reliability you expect from Honda cars, trucks, and vans is the same reliability you get from a dealer like Brown Darlington Honda. In fact, the manufacturer's customer satisfaction survey ranks Brown Darlington Honda over 94%. From Alexandria, take the George Washington Parkway north, past the Key Bridge to the Stout Run exit. Follow that to Lee Highway, turn right, and we're one half mile on the left. Brown's Arlington Honda, dedicated to superior customer satisfaction. ATS, ready to play, hitting the season four in June. Orioles, 14 games of interleague battle. Fox Baseball Thursday night, DC United, NASCAR, Formula One, and Fast Track Friday. NFL Europe. Go! Ready for mid-season four. ATS. Ready to play all June long. Outside the line travels all over the world with the U.S. World Cup team on their bumpy road to France. It's an all-access pass to meetings, games, even into the locker room. Outside the line, the story behind the U.S. World Cup team. Tuesday, 7.30 on ESPN. ESPN 
ESPN's coverage of the Stanley Cup playoffs is brought to you by MasterCard. MasterCard, the official card of the NHL. And by Molson Ice, an adventure in every deal. The Washington Capitals potentially one goal away from a trip to the Stanley Cup Finals. At least one goal. We're tied at one as we get to set for the third. Welcome back inside the Marine Midland Arena. Steve Levy along with Darren Pang and along with Brian Hayward as well downstairs. Kind of an out of character period for this series. Couple of goals in 22 seconds from a couple of guys who struggled offensively throughout. Well, and, and at any given point, that's the great thing about the great game of hockey. A goaltender can eliminate the offense, but grinding sentiment or checking sentiment can also break open a game and create some offense as well. It was interesting that Barry Melrose was talking about a goal after you score a goal, right. and Lindy Ruff came back with an offensive line. He came back with the line of Don Ladette. And, and so that was sort of interesting. Maybe he was trying to carry some offense down the road. A look at our head and shoulders storyline as we take you through the two goals scored by 22 seconds apart. How about Michael Pekka, the first Sabre the forward to score a goal in nearly 200 minutes. And it's the fifth straight game. This series enters the third, tied. Washington has won three of those games. Our head and shoulders storyline replay will go right to the goals that we scored. Dixon Ward backhand pass to a quick and he lets it rip one nothing Buffalo, but 11 seconds later, Estes Tikkanen comes back and ties it up for the Washington Capitals. A momentum killer, certainly for the home squad, the Buffalo Sabres, their fans right here, and a huge, huge goal for the Washington Capitals. That's through two periods of play. The shot's on goal. Buffalo 31-20. Face-offs one, Washington 30-22. And we are underway. Third period from Buffalo. Rolls in on Dominic Hoskins. Thought about gloving it and covering it up, but he leaves for his defense. Sabres in the home white, caps in the road blue uniform. Tough guy rides out for both clubs as we start this third period. Hoskins will leave it there as the Caps go for the early change. Less than 25 seconds into this third period. Batted out of center. Oates for Bellows. Tried to drop it back, cruise the hit, gives it back to Bellows, nearly came out in front of the net. This time it does, Rob Ray is there for Buffalo. Potentially his final game in a Buffalo Sabres uniform. Ricky gets to it for the Caps, because now Buffalo has gone for a change. At center, Shannon was spun around, and that allowed the Caps to break inside the Buffalo zone. Olsen Wilson go to the glass. Bellows and Shannon now do battle as well. Grosha gets to it. Barnaby trying to come over and help. More on Grosha and Barnaby when we get a stop at the play. Ricky tried to hold the zone, but Barnaby able to get out ahead for Brian Holzinger now. Inside the Washington zone. Judo, uh, the good back check, takes it away from Holzinger and gets it out. Bit of a dangerous pass, but it worked. And here's Bondra streaking at center. Bondra for Oates. Try to give it back to Bondra, broken up nicely by Jitnik, and now the turnover leads to this. Bondra from the angle, and a sick save by Hoskins. Kept in, though. Again, Buffalo sloppy inside their own end. Rolls up on the boards, right to the capital. Center and feed, Bondra couldn't handle. Goes wide of the net. Terrible giveaways by the Buffalo Sabres. Michael Groshek had the puck with a lot of time, both situations, and he carelessly gave it up. You can't afford to do that. Certainly in this juncture of the game, this isn't a game in November. They have to be stronger on the puck. They can't give the puck away, especially to the players they're giving the way to. Two minutes into this third, we're tied at one. And the Sabres this time able to get it out, but it's sent right back in. Smell it right back, out. And the Sabres look to move it ahead. Shot inside the Washington zone, and icing will be called. The Grosick there at the end of the shift, and we got word up here that on the bench, at the tail end of the second period, that Grosick and Matthew Barnaby line mate. A little tussle on the bench. The player had to sit between these two players. But on this play, he's getting some encouragement from his coach. And Lindy Ruff doing a smart thing right there. Grosick has the puck. He's trying to play it back right to the middle of the ice. Adam Oates is there. That was the first one. And then he had another one trying to jump another goes right to the defenseman. So both guys sitting together. You need to come together here. You need to. You know, you need to, as a unit, make sure you're on the same page. Drop passes right there at the top of the circles inside your own zone blindly. Oh, boy, that just doesn't cut it. Face off. It's tied up. Sanderson, though, gets possession of the puck for Buffalo. He's checked immediately by Kelly Miller, and the Sabres are just clear. And 
Freaky wins the race, and therefore icing back inside the Buffalo zone will bring it. I'll tell you, some numbers that bode well for the Washington Capitals. Their goal can roll up Solzig in the third period and overtime has shot 196 of 206 shots. Now, the Washington Capitals, like the Buffalo Sabres, a team that regularly have gotten outshot in postseason competition. For Ron Wilson, he knows he's got a pillar of strength back there. They're able to take some chances, but this is relatively a conservative hockey club. There's not a big aggressive four check. It's more a containment game from the Washington Capitals. There was a second period, though, it was really up and down. Not by design by either club, I'm sure. That had a Western Conference feel to it. Hard hit throw by Mike Eagle. Crunch job on Donald Audette, who goes right back at him. Cannon wraps it around and out. Johansson back for Washington. From Mark Tenorti, he's played a strong game for the Cats. Ten in by Miller. Hostigal lead there for Mike Wilson. Up for Shannon. And out ahead for Derek Platt. Platt couldn't handle as they hit the line. And Tenorti fired it right back out. Caps have it center. And they'll glance in off the side board. Shannon will look to make the quick play, try to catch Washington in the chain. Here's Ray on the fourth deck, expect the crunch. And there it was, although not as much as advertised. And Gonchar comes away. Off of Craig Barubi. Barubi had a goal in his last game here. His first in 50-plus playoff game. And as Primo touches up, we get a penalty. A splash. Gonchar was splashed. Cap power play when we come back. Good day, eh? As you can see, me and my brother had the chance for real adventure, eh? before Max can play again. Well, the vet said Max will be back his old self in a couple of days. Even the interior of a Chevy Blazer was designed to give you peace of mind. Chevy Blazer, a little security in an insecure world. Rob Ray, the unrestricted free agent. He's restricted for the next two minutes. Last minute. Well, Gonchar's left hand. He's got the short tuck, but often the elbow pad goes right down. It's kind of like a flat pad now. He took a peek over to his left. The referee, Don Koharski, was there to make the call. As Gonchar went by the Buffalo Sabres bench, he had his glove off, his left glove off, and he was shaking it around there, giving it a little shake. Well, what he's done right now is giving his opportunity a little shake, an opportunity with the man advantage. Neither power play has scored in this hockey game. Buffalo power play in this postseason is ranked third. They were 13th during the regular season. And it's there in time to Washington zone. Pulls it back toward there. Housley and Gonchar will work the point. It's the standard top line for Washington on this power play unit with Oates, Bellows, and Juno. Juno gets to it there. Looks to throw it down deeper for Oates. Melick is on, along with Jitnik. Dixon Ward and Michael Pekka, your four Buffalo Sabres on the penalty kill. It has another minute 20 to go as they're able to clear. Washington Capitals are extremely good at luring the defensive club over to one side of the ice. Have another guy circle around for a one-timer on the far side. Here's Oates to handling in, trying to split through. Bellows somehow came away with the puck. Judo for Housley. Try to give it back to him. Shannon gets to it. And now for Plant, off of Holzinger. Here's Brian Holzinger one on two. Now get some help with Plant. Throws towards the front of the net. And it was well wide of the mark. Juno will recover and move ahead at center for Washington. Here's Joey Juno. Got a much better playoff than he did regular season. Speak and crunch hard. As the Capitals throw inside his own for the power play, but fired right back out by Buffalo. 35 seconds left in the penalty to Ray. Johansson back for it as the pressure really mounts now. In an elimination type game, you get this late in the hockey game, one goal to be season over for one of these two teams, the Buffalo Sabres. 
And the Caps are going away, potentially, from advancing to the finals. Well, Lindy Ruff, you've got to give him plenty of credit. In his first year behind the bench for the Buffalo Sabres, Lindy Ruff has made the kind of adjustments necessary. Obviously disappointed, disheartened, confused and hurt by the way that that team came out so ill-prepared for game number five, yet they win a hockey game. They bounce back here. They've made some adjustments inside the locker room. He really let them have it in between the second and third and again after that game. Tenorti shot, stopped by Hostick. And we get the whistle, 11 seconds left in the penalty to Rob Ray. Lindy Ruff is a player, had 164 playoff penalty minutes. Number two all time behind Rob Ray, so you know he's got something ticking inside. There's something in that heart. He also has experience going to the Stanley Cup final as an assistant coach with the Florida Panthers. Not many coaches have the opportunity to go back in the city that you play and win a Stanley Cup when you never won one as a player there. Kick that. Kept in by Sonori. Five seconds left on the power play. Hasha took it away from... Bondra, and the save is clear. In case you're getting ahead of yourself, and Lindy Ruff isn't, but the last rookie head coach to win the Stanley Cup, John Perron, Montreal, back in 1986. At center now, Barnaby, checked by a couple of caps, who happen to be Slovakian. Zednik, the shot. Missed the mark, Nikolic in there. His shot blocked. Ricci couldn't hold the zone. Delayed offside, but Buffalo will bring it out without the whistle. Nice pass, takes the tape for Grosick, but he couldn't make the play inside the zone. The interesting to watch, Grosick and Barnaby on the ice after what we understand a bit of a tussle towards the end of the second period on the Buffalo bench. Here's Bondra, turnaround shot wide of the mark. Comes up for Ricci, hit by Barnaby. Primo looks to move it out ahead. They do. Here's Groshek far side. Michael Groshek's shot was blocked by Cowie O'Hanson. Hardy along the board. Wilson comes in from his point position to get it to Barnaby. Looked at, and finally the Caps come away with Bondra. Out ahead. Here's Essa in. He's got the lone goal for the Capitals. On with Kelly Miller. And Mike Eagle, and there's Eagle there, was sent to the ice. Sanderson picks it up. Like he didn't pick it up, never touched it. Might have been a two-line pass if he did. Hostic will play it back behind his net. Seven minutes into the third period, we're tied at one. Buffalo's very, very sloppy in this game. They have to get that mental edge back. They're the kind of team right now that looks like they're going to make one big mistake right now. Very, very sloppy with their passes and their turnovers. Sabres so far have yet to manage a shot in the third. And their bench for now is calm. Red Dog Rules for Living, number 18. Deep travel at block. Cattle travel at herd. The dog. Dog travel at pack. Just one of America's natural wonders. Chevy Tahoe. And it's big Australian. And all 
because it's not covered up. Then it squeaks through the legs, somehow, magically between the legs. And Cole, I don't know how this thing went in. It just squirted through like it had eyes. Man, oh man, and it doesn't even touch the back of the net. So the tough line that was just put together by Lindy Ruff. Bob Boudner will get the goal, but it's Cruz and Ray and Primo in front of the net. And they went head-to-head -head with the tough line of Washington. It seems like when the Buffalo Sabres are playing their worst, they managed to get the break. Amazing. That was their worst seven and a half minutes of this hockey game. Washington is all over them, and they counter with the goal. 2-1, Buffalo. Now Washington needs to do what they did after Buffalo scored the first goal of the game. Come right back. Bruno stops behind the net. No, it was all alone momentarily, but they couldn't squeeze it through the two talking to the players after that last German. Koharski was right there. When he said Chief, he's talking about Craig Berube of the Washington Capitals, spinning him around. Koharski gave him credit. He kept his eye on it the whole time, and he was in good position. Kolzig had the puck under his head. But there was an opening. He never had it fully covered. If Koharski had the happy hand, the happy whistle, he would have pulled that down. He was very patient. Giveaway. to Trying to get on his skates after he had stumbled down. Here's Tenorti. Showing off the strength. Throws towards the front of the net. It's broken up by Buffalo. And they clear. Here's Barada in a race to the puck. But Johansson beats him to it for Washington now. Dixon Ward takes it away. Dixon Ward comes over the corner.
inside the capital zone now. Here's Sonorti. Oh, it's one touches for Bello. Couldn't squeeze it through. Barnaby for Buffalo. Leaves for Holzinger. Here's Brian Holzinger. Great pass for Grosick. Grosick lets it go. Oh. Saved by Holzinger. And he juggles and hangs on with Barnaby right in his face. And he shoves the glove right towards Matthew Barnaby. What a save this is by Grosick. Because Grosick makes a nice play using the defenseman to Norty. Well, it looks like a screen at first. It might even have gone off the blade of the stick at Tenorti. And, oh, man, Colby had to fight that off and smother that area between the arm and the side of the body. Dominic Hasek looked like he was going to the forehand, but instead he went to the backhand. And because of that, the Sabres were absolutely scrambling. That backhand play there by Brian Bellows went right off his head, right off the helmet of the goaltender. Oh, it's off. Oh, there, right there. Man, Oates is a right-hand shot. Bellows is a right-hand shot. Forehand, the strong side. He tried to do a little reverse with the backhand, and that's a tough play. Face off, left of Kozik. How's this one gonna shake out? Nine and a half to go in the third. For a dangerous clearing pass. They're looking for the break, though. You see that? Bondra goes back in his own zone, takes it off the board. They're looking for the breakaway pass. Zednik was there sniffing around. Shot. Oh! to the Dominator's zone with 9.05 to go in the third. Goharski's having a word with Peter Bonder. Bonder motioned towards him. Gonchar's shot is low, and it's perfectly redirected. Right over the glove and right off the post. Clearly off the post. Doesn't quite meet the joint of the crossbar right there. And this is a... Oh, what a super deflection that is! You've got to be kidding me. That is great! stick like he laid it between the legs like that and then going up like that that is an athletic wow shot you see scoring chances rather just about even even in the second just about even here oh. on the third oh is that hockey right there as that defined that moment remember when johan garpenlov in 94 against toronto for Stanley hit the crossbar how about that deflection? Hasek deflects it off the glass, right back into his glove. 8.57 to go. Here in the third. We're a post away from being tied at two, but it keeps it at 2-1. Are you fed up with hours of ironing agony? Stop! Introducing the original Iron Quick system from Quantum Homewares. The fast, easy way to cut your ironing time in half. While you iron one side, the Iron Quick system does the other. Easily iron wrinkles out of blue jeans. Iron right over decals and buttons without melting or sticking. And put a perfect crease in pants every time. The three-way Iron Quick system includes the reflector board cover that fits any board, won't ever move, and uses reflective heat to iron both sides at once. The patented fabric protector that fits any iron. Safely iron all fabrics on the same high setting. Protect delicate silk, buttons, and decals. The safety cradle to hold your iron in place and keep the cord out of your way. You could buy an expensive iron, a fancy cover, and a clumsy cradle and spend as much as $200. But they wouldn't do all the things the original Iron Quick system can for just two payments of $19.95. As a bonus, you'll get the instant cleaning roller set at no extra charge. For quality and value, always look for the Quantum Globe. Peter Bonder has 10 career goals against Dominic Hasek. This one here, though... This one would be a hard one to teach. Anticipating where the puck is, jumping up, turning the blade of his stick, and going off the crossbar. Oh, man. You're going to see Bonder a lot here. 8.57 left to go. And Ron Wilson's going to have those big guns a turning. Adam Oates, Bonder's line, and they're going to be going full force. Every guy to watch is certainly the defenseman, Sergei Gonchar, jumping up, casing in on the play, trying to keep everything alive. Good out there to Brian. Well, I was just going to follow up on the Bonder deflection guy. We thought that bounces would play a huge role in the outcome of tonight's game. I don't think there's any question that Dominic Hasek just got the break of the night. You got that right, big guy. Taking a look at the bounces like you did before this. We had, you know, offside plays, guys in the crease. We've had posts. We've had everything in this series. Whoa! He tipped it through his own leg and jumped in the air. That's amazing. And Hasek fell down momentarily, but now gets back on his feet. Two on two as they hit the red line. Now on across the capital line. And the 
cuts the angle as well off the mark. Hunter throws the body check off the side of the net now. Still loose. Johansson wraps it around. Cannon, good play to keep him with his skate and then to his stick. Johansson will get it there. Coming up on 8.15 to go here in the third. Will the Sabres force a game seven in Washington Saturday night on the deuce? Sanderson got to it. Looked like he beat the play there. Hauschka got the glove raised for icing, and no call was made. What timer That is blocked. Oh, what a move. Peeking in. Oh, straddling the blue line, able to keep in. Hunter has. Off Gonchar's skate. Fetzeriki shot. It is deflected off the mark. Kelly Miller is back by. Penalty coming up. Hunter was taken down. And a penalty coming up. Looks like Sanderson will go. Sanderson's going to go off for interference. The veteran Dale Hunter came across to the right of Dominic Hasek. And it looked at first like Sanderson was just trying to slide in be beside him, sort of veer him off. And the way in which, on the left side right here, Oh, it's a leg. Well, this is a definite good call by the official. Uh, this is a definite call. He uses left leg, left leg, and then uses upper body, uses stick. And he uses, you know, to, to hold him back and use the leg. And so, man, that's... Whew. The bad penalty at this time of the game at 7.43. Sanderson trying to do his part to come back in the zone. And Hunter was lucky. He fell back on his head. And he's got that flimsy little helmet on there. A little coop, I think. 7.40 to go in the first. Maybe a defining moment in the game, maybe in the series, depending upon how it shakes out. You betcha. There's no doubt about that. Let's set up the Washington power play for you. Big line is out there. Bellows, Juno, and Oates, the forward line. Hostick will play it away. It's Gonchar and Housley filling out your five Washington Capitals with the power play. Well, Housley's going to be jumping. Gonchar is going to be jumping. And if Adam Oates can buy some time, he'll find those players. Top defensive pair on for Buffalo. Zitnik and Schmelik. Derek Plant on the ice. Along with Holzinger. What's the speed here? And Holzinger trying to slip through. No call. Crowd roaring for a call. Won't we'll get it. Oh, man, no call. And the Capitals able to break back the other way now. Sabres do get to it. Able to clear. And Plant goes down trying to draw the call. felt like they were owed an even up call they're not going to get it cleared by buffalo and they'll kill off some more clock 50 seconds left in the capitals power play a six and a half in the game they're going to be upset buffalo is and rightfully so but you still have to find a way to calm down that bench and get ready for the next shift here's bond for now drop for your hansen shot might have been a pass as well off the mark Centering feed for Tenor, he had it on his backhand, and he slides into the corner. Zitnik takes his man out of the play, that's Mikulisi. Rolls back for Johansson, thrown in deeper. Hasek very active out into the crease area, slides it away. It's Peter Bondra! High game at two. What a pass. What a pass that was. Bondra all alone. Hasek no chance whatsoever. Big time players come to play at important junctures of a hockey game, and Bondra has done just that. Lindy Ruff is absolutely furious, and he's saying twice there should have been a penalty, and that would have nullified this goal by the Washington Capitals. It would have stopped the play and stopped the tone of the hockey game. Hostick played the puck on the far side. On the right side of your screen is going to be Peter Bondra, and he's all alone right there. The referee points towards the net, and it's a goal. Hostick just barely got back into his net. He's a no-brainer for Peter Bondra as he takes that hard pass from Andre Nikolicin, who has established an assist mark for the Washington Capitals. And Hasek has no chance whatsoever. You go back to the sequence of events as Bondra's got his sixth goal of the playoffs and seven points in his last eight games. But the Sabres absolutely furious. Brian Holzinger flew through the middle, created a scoring chance, and was dumped down. And there was no call on the play. Peter Bondra gets the goal on the power play. The assist to Nico Egan. Bondra, his 11th goal in 18 games, NHL games, that is, against Dominic Hostick. A pretty good ratio against the best goalie in the world. Well, Rob Ray trying to get the, his hockey club geared up again. He's a vocal leader. They've got to put the non-call aside right now. Now it's 2-2, and the Caps are back into it. Nico 
as it fifth ties the all-time mark in playoff Stevens and Mike Ridley own that mark of 11-6 in one playoff year. Draw won by Washington. The Bondra power play goal has certainly changed the complexion of this one. Inside the Buffalo zone. Bugner slaps at it and he's called. The icing will bring it down and the Washington end with 5.40 to go. Tied at two. Andre Nikolicin, 11 assists, tying that, tying that team record. Scott Stevens, Mike Ridley. Mike Gartner also had 10 assists, so he was tied with Andre Nikolicin, but it's been a dynamic tandem. Nikolicin with his vision on the ice always seems to know where Peter Bonder is, and Peter Bonder didn't credit. And 52 goal scorers drive to the net. They pay a price. He was there, but he was unmolested. The Buffalo Sabres forgot about where Peter Bonder was. The draw, Caps get to it. And it's Kelly Miller. He'll shoot in. Woolley gets to it first. Holzinger on it. And on a player as well. Coming up on 520 to go here in the third. Pugner, nice pass out ahead for Grochik. He's got Barnaby. Barnaby hits the break. Oh. Trying to use Grochik as a screen. And it caromed out of play and into the crowd. Matthew Barnaby has not been getting the kind of offensive chances that he had been previously to begin this series. And then obviously in the series against the Montreal Canadiens with the hat trick and against Philadelphia, Matthew Barnaby grew, grew up idolizing Dale Hunter of the Washington Capitals. On that last sequence, he was trying to get the attention of Mark Sonorti, trying to draw him into him. The other player he idolized was... Ken the Rat Lindsman. <laughs> Two players that like to get under the skin of the opponent. And Barnaby's trying to do that right now from the bench. Face off. Won by Buffalo. Here's Darryl Shannon in deep. Shannon. Cross ice pass. Wilson kicked at it to keep in. And the Caps get it. Look to break back the other way. Oh, here's Juno. This line's got a ton of ice tonight. Out of center now. Flip in. By Shannon, pulls it back to play. Donchar away from Ogdet, and it's down the length of the ice. 4.45 to go. We'll say regulation time now. We are tied at two. ESPN's exclusive coverage, game six, Eastern Conference Finals. Shot from the angle is blocked off the chin pad of Gil Hansen. Cruz on, looking for the big check. Through the body, but couldn't get the puck, and it's back out of center. Off the skate of Cruz. Cruz will put him up to one. Shoots in. Looking to get some help from Donald Ogdet. Score one goal and they're all the scoring line. Tell you what, Cruz has played well in this hockey and he has jumped right into it and it's been seamless for Paul Cruz. The Buffalo Sabres keep in mind right now with their season on the line, the Washington Capitals aren't in that position. Buffalo doesn't need to win it right now in the next four minutes. They can play their own game they just can't be careless. They can't just think that we have to win in the next four and gamble all the time. They still have time. And this will be touched up for icing with 3.50 to go in a 2-2 game. It's 2-2 thanks to Peter Bondra's power play goal. Bondra, the cat, 21 games over 500 when he scores a goal. Will it be 22 when this one's over? Hey, science. Ever wonder what a hard-working engine goes through? Yeah. It gets the high rev and I drove over the mountain because it was their crap kicked out of it. With abuse like that, you don't want to take chances. This is Quaker State 4x4, a synthetic blend for hard-working engines made by guys with more college degrees than they've had dates. Fantastic. For pure maximum protection, there's nothing better. I wouldn't lie to you. They're not paying me enough. Quaker State. Sensible technology. What more do you need to know? Suburban is the largest, most powerful sport utility vehicle on the face of the planet. Back in Buffalo, 3.50 to go, tie game, tied at two. It's a magic.
Edmonton being on the bench in this position, tied 2-2, and an opportunity to go to the Stanley Cup final. And this late is just about next goal wins, I and mean, you can never be sure of that. No, you can't be sure of it, but I, I, you're, I mean, betting man would say you're absolutely right there. Spin around, shot. Oh, and a save by Hoskins on Richard Zednick. Nearly got it up over the shoulder. Relic will throw around. Johansson able to keep in. Pekka couldn't get to it. Here's Bondra now. Bondra on his backhand. Spins the fourth. Centering pass for Zednick. Stopped by Hoskins, and he'll hang on. And Zednick was flattened by Zednick. Our Molson Ice League leaders, most playoff points without winning a Stanley Cup. There's Raymond Bork. There's Brian Propp. And then there's Adam Oates, who's got a shot at least to go into the Stanley Cup Finals. If the Caps can get one more here tonight. Well, Adam Oates was in a position, obviously, in game number five. He had it on the backhand, and, and Dominic Hasek made one of the most unbelievable saves. Am I getting goofy if I say in, in like, in playoff history? I, I know there's been so many great things happen, but that one there was a sure goal that changed that hockey game. I guess if they go and win the Stanley Cup, then it becomes the greatest save or one of the greatest saves and momentum changers. I would say you're safe to call yeah. it an SB maker for sure. Yeah, you got that right. Here's Nikolicin. Get across the line. It's fired in. Slapped at. Buffalo can't clear. Bondra rolls it on goal, and Hasek sticks it away. The 05 to go here in the third. Zednick has had himself quite a shift here. And a lengthy one at this point. And it's cleared ahead and center by Buffalo. Looking the Sabres now with Ward. Ward couldn't handle it. It's taken away. Poked away. And here is Zedek. Crosses the line. Big oh, shot. Man. Rebound is loose. Bondra overskated as there was just the slightest bit of contact made. They come the Sabres back at center. Here's Holzinger with the wheel. Brian Holzinger backhand shot. Stopped by Colton. Holzinger recovers now. On uh, with Groshik and Barnaby. There's Barnaby. He's been quiet offensively the last few games. Groshik just let Tenorti stick go in time. Peeking in for Washington. And he'll clear. And this will be icing. As we get the whistle on the touch-up. 2.14 to go in the third. Shots on goal now. The Capitals with 32. You see in the first period, 16 for the Buffalo Sabres, but Olaf Kolzig really weathered the storm well for the Washington Capitals, allowed them to settle down. 15-10 then in the second period. And in this period now, Olaf Kolzig hasn't seen a whole lot of action. And so, again, we get into the mind of, of a goaltender staying in one end. Every time a goaltender at one end has dominated, whether it be a period, a sequence, a hockey game, the other guy has, has gone on to lose those hockey games. This one is very, very close. Both goaltenders playing terrific hockey. Face off. Oates and Holzinger will take the draw. Right side of Ole the goal. Won by Washington. Joe Ricci for Joe and Judo. Judo is hit but able to get it out of center for Oates. Drop pass in the neutral zone for Gonskar. Now it's to set up the play. Shot well off the mark as it was deflected away. Barnaby will poke it deeper behind his own net. Wilson will slap it around the board. But the Caps able to hold in. Oates has tried to center in front for Bellows. He's tied up by Darryl Cannon now. Centering feed. Shot the save. Gonskar. Maybe his best opportunity for a goal in this series. And the big pad saved by Hoshik. That's the other way. caught Kozik napping. 90 seconds to go regulation time. Right after Gonchar has a great shot in the offensive zone, Buffalo Sabres bounce back with a terrific play of their own. Remember there was Grosik just moments ago that went down the right side and went against the green to the far side, and Kozik fought that one off. This is Kozik's first shot in a while, and he got beat on the stick side. Great shot by Grosik. Here's Donald on deck, couldn't handle, out at center. Zednick trying to get to the again. Final minute to play, regulation time here in the third. We're tied at two. Caps win, series over. Sabres win, game seven on the two on Saturday night. Zednick lays in a prone position down on the ice inside the Washington zone. We get a whistle, 48 seconds left. Trainer has it, there's the trainer, San Juan coming on the ice for the Washington Capitals. Zednick went down as if he took a knee to knee. I thought from this angle originally it was a hip check, but the way he went down and never got up, 
from the bench even there didn't look, look like immediate concern i was watching ron wilson's reaction right there he never once looked towards the referee looking for a call now he jumped up to help himself and the stick of smell like it wasn't a knee to knee situation here well grosick before that this shot here again just before the defenseman can get in the way and it beat Colsey clean. Just beat him clean to the sixth side. Bang. Right off the post. And as Brian Haywood had mentioned, and throughout the course of this, it, it's been some breaks. Bondrich tipping went off the crossbar behind Dominic Hasek. That shot there by Grosik off the post behind Olaf Colsey. And it appears as if Dednick is okay on the bench. Obviously, very, very good news for the Washington Capitals. His strength as a player comes in his legs, too. Very, very powerful. Here's Pekka trying to make the play. Can't. Tekinen takes it away for Washington now. At center. Tekinen recovers. Trying to get around Smellick to let him free. Centering pass pops up in the air. Backhand shot. Went wide of the net. They're calling a hand pass to the bring it back out the center. Let's listen in on that one call that was made by Don Kowarski on Zednik. Let's see what he has to say here. He turns up out of the way with a stick. Well, pretty much so, yeah. It's hard to tell at first glance there, and that's why you have to appreciate what this catch is seeing on the ice. But I mean, on that situation there, it's the way he went down, and unless he jarred himself when he landed, that might be the only explanation. Lindy Ruff has cooled down a bit. I'll tell you, he was on fire, though, after the power play goal by Peter Bondra, which has tied this hockey game for now. Under 20 seconds to go. Regulation three. Bounce in front. Nearly got away from Mike Wilson. The youngest team in the NHL, the Buffalo Sabres. Let's see how cool they are against the oldest team, the Washington Capitals. Cross ice pass, picked off. How about the gamble by Buffalo in the final few seconds? And that'll do it. Horn will sound. We will have overtime. And you'd be advised, you saw the game last night, Detroit to Dallas, to make sure you are back for the drop of the puck. Overtime. Will we have a game seven? Or will the caps advance on to the finals right away? To John and Barry. All right, Steve, thanks a lot. We are tied at two, and just an amazing game. If you can't enjoy this one, you do not have a fault. Check for it, at least. But Dominic Hasek does so much to get Buffalo where they are, but there's one thing that he's a little lax on, that's handling the puck. I certainly believe that today he is the best in the world at stopping the puck. I don't think anyone can argue with that. But on the flip side, he might be the worst in the world right now at playing the puck. We've seen it almost cost him goals all playoff long. He goes out, plays that puck up the wall. If he stays in the net right there, he's ready for that pass across to Bondra. He's out of the net. He's trying to get set that quick pass to Bondra, wide open right side of the net. He always gets in trouble when he plays the puck for some reason or other. I know Lindy Ruff doesn't like him to, but he's such a great goaltender. He likes to do that for some reason, but it's costed him uh, this time, and it's almost cost him four or five other times in the playoffs. All right, it's time for the New Dodge Overtime Intermission Report. When we come back, we'll take another look at the non-call by Don Koharski from the lap of the score. Here tied at two, headed to overtime. Want to win a million bucks from MasterCard? Just watch Game One of the Stanley Cup Finals, baby. Stanley? Stanley who? Someone shoots from the ice. You play at home. There is ice. Where? The MasterCard Million Dollar Stanley Cup shot. Have your MasterCard ready during Game One of the Stanley Cup Finals. If the shooter wins a million, you can win a million. <laughs> 